some really excellent speakers over at Abner Clay. Uh, this is the third portion of our action for International Women's Day. We just stopped by City Hall and sent a very loud and clear message to them about what we like. We even left a sticky note on the front door. <laughs> We're going to have a few more speakers for you guys today. Are you ready? When we're finished up here, we're going to go over to the main library. We're going to have a screening of She's Beautiful When She's Angry. All are welcome. I highly recommend coming to watch this. If you don't want to walk there, that's cool. There is ride chair. Um, you don't have to go alone. If you want to head back to Admiral Clay, make sure you hit somebody up. We can all walk back together. So our first speaker, Jeanette Amato. I have not seen you. moment to hear me out. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm, undoc I'm undocumented and I'm a student, a sister, a friend, and a co-worker. Yes, I'm scared. I think every day we see my family, my parents, the original dreamers, and the dreams, and my dreams. But I can't, I cannot sit in silence and not fight the broken immigration system that has led to the separation of families false ideas and broken dreams. So today, I stand in front of every single one of you and ask you to do the right thing and to fight with me. Yes. My family, my community. We will. When I say, I, when I say it, fight, I mean stand in front of us. Shield of defense from those who criminalize and terrorize and attack us. Stand in arm with us when politicians are implementing policies in fear to my community. Tell them in front of their faces that you will use your power and your privilege to yes. vote them out. Yes. 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 Tell them you will fight to keep my community together. Tell them to stop using my community for political agendas. Yes. Because we're humans, humans that came to this country for life and liberty. I have no words that will ever explain how trapped and how trapped in my community feel when the only thing that we're looking for is a better life. Everybody's great at sharing posts on social media, but I need to see you here next to me with my own eyes when my community is under attack. The last two weeks, I have been reminded that I will never be welcome to the place that I know. I was told that I was a criminal because of my skin color and that I'm a danger to my state. Tell me how I'm supposed to go to sleep every night knowing that Virginia politicians are using me and my community to gain power. I'm tired and I cry all the time because I cannot plan the next two years of my life. It breaks my heart to see my parents not fulfill one single American dream and that's to obtain a home, a house, because unfortunately the immigration system is so broken that they, that will be janked away from them. It tears me apart knowing that my parents tell me that if they die in this country, that they will die in peace knowing that my sister and I were able to get an education. But that education by the Virginia politicians, they are denying my education. And they told me that I don't deserve a seat in the classrooms. Politicians have lied to me, to my face, that they will vote in support for my educational opportunities and my fellow dreamers, yet vote against it when the, the day has come. That day, nobody, nobody stood up for me or the thousand undocumented Virginia students. No one said stop throwing people under the bus. Instead, they gave me excuses of why my education was an issue that cannot be discussed at this moment. So when will be the right time to give a students access to education? Why is it that my education has to come last? What do I have to prove to give to be given that one opportunity? The time is now to fight with me and the thousands of undocumented students and get answers. Stop being scared of what might happen because if I can sit here 
and share my fears, I know you can stand up to any politician and hold them accountable for their actions. Yeah. And we will. Will we? Yeah. We will. We will. We will. We will. Yes, that nobody is illegal. There's nobody that is illegal. And we will be there. Our next speaker is Tram Nguyen from the New Virginia Minor Majority. Are you here? Yeah. My friend? <laughs> Hello, I haven't met you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Yannette, thank you for, for sharing your story. It's incredibly powerful and beautiful and brave for you to be able to stand up in front of a crowd with, with cameras rolling and, and, and being so open and vulnerable. So thank you. Uh, so on this International Women's Day, I actually, I think about my mom. Um, a lot. My mom is probably one of the most resilient, brave women I know. Um, when she was in her 20s with two young daughters, um, my father was captured in Vietnam and put into a re-education camp. So she, with having to raise as a single mom two daughters seven years apart from her husband, um, made ends meet in the streets of Vietnam. And when my dad escaped that re-education camp, my mom took a leap of faith and she stepped on a boat with my dad and my two older sisters. And they ventured the, the South China Sea and made their way um, to Thailand, to a refugee camp where I was born in, in 1981. And uh, we made our way to this country um, when I was six months old. So this is the only place that I have ever known my parents gave up their dreams. In fact, their dreams were taken away from them when they had to step foot on that boat um, and to risk everything. And they did that to come to this country so that my three sisters and I could pursue our dreams. And so I think about them and, and I think about the work that I do and I remember the day that I was sworn in as a citizen of this country. It's a day that I will never forget because I finally felt whole a whole human being that I finally belonged. Um, and I made a commitment to myself that day and every day forward to ask myself, you know, what does democracy mean to me? What does it mean to be a citizen in this country? And it means to, you know, find avenues for everyday folks to lift up their voices and to be heard, to fight for those hopes and dreams that my parents gave up all those years ago. I spend every day in the General Assembly building, down there, over here, not because it's fun, not because I want to walk through the power, the halls of power in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I do this and I'm here every day to be present, to show my face and to represent the hopes and dreams of people like my mom. And so we fight every day for social justice. We fight every day to represent, to make sure that we all have a say in the decisions that impact our lives, whether that's fighting for a living wage, fighting for paid sick days, fighting for health care for everybody, or for immigrant rights, so that folks like Yannette don't have to live here in fear. That's why we have to continue to be present. It's a long, hard battle that we are, we are in right now, but it's worth it. It is worth it because it's the world that we want to create for ourselves and for our children and for the future of this commonwealth in this country. Um, so, you know, that's what we celebrate today. The future, the future is women and the future is now. And it's a great day to be celebrating all of us. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention a strong Puerto Rosa who is in our fight with us, Alejandra Pablos, who is currently yeah. detained in Arizona. She would be here today if she could walking with us, standing with us, and fighting with us. And we need to think about her and the other strong fighters like her who are putting their lives on the line day in and day out. And we have to be in this together. So thank you for the opportunity to, to say those words and to be in this fight with you. I'd like to welcome Sharnay McLean with Fight for 15. I'm a leader with 515 and a low-wage worker. 
Being a low, low wage worker is something I'm not ashamed of, especially now that I am part of a movement to bring dignity and respect to our jobs. We as workers have the power we need to turn things around. We have the power to change our conditions through direct actions, such as striking. Historically, and even today, as we have seen in West Virginia, striking comes highly recommended as a vehicle for change. I am so grateful to see everyone out here today supporting the women's strike. Trump and his people are just a symptom of the problem. My struggle as a black woman in America did not start with Trump. It started hundreds of years ago, fighting and struggling, runs in my blood and ancestors. This thing, I know, the thing is, I know we all get free if we love and support each other. This does not mean just when it's time to show up to a rally. Us women face so many barriers on the job. It is not uncommon for us to be paid less than men performing the same job. Often low wage employers do not allow any flexible for child care, flexibility, for child care or kids doctor appointment, which we all know is very expensive. On top of many things of us have to deal with very degrees of sexual harassment from supervisors and customers. And let me just give a quick shout out to my transgender sisters, undocumented women, women with disabilities and other women on the margins. These women face even more barriers to job six access and safety. If we are not supporting all women, then we ourselves are recreating the same violence used against us that we are trying to fight. We are going to do what, 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 what are we going to do tomorrow? The day after that. What are we going to do tomorrow and the day after that to ensure safe and equal working conditions for all of us women? We cannot stop here. Whose phone is this? Whose phone am I holding? It closed. <laughs> Somebody knows who. It's yours. Okay. <laughs> I lost my paper, y'all. I have to rely on this beast of technology. There we go, okay. So, is Ashley here from the stripper strike? No? Oh, well, shout out to Ashley, shout out to the stripper strike. Uh, one of the, the overarching themes, as you, you all have seen and heard, is that Women's Day is not just about one kind of woman. And it is not about one kind of struggle. It is about the struggles that we all face together. And we need the support of each other. We are training condition in this country to fight with one another, to other one another, to say you're to this, you're to that. Through the media, through social interactions, we're taught to fight and not be together with one another. And one of the most beautiful things about today is that we're getting to see so many different faces, so many different experiences, so many different struggles in one place. And this is an opportunity for us to take a look. Look around, look at the women, look at the men, look at the people who are here. We're in this together, we have to fight. We're gonna do it every day. Are we gonna do it every day? Yes! It has to happen every day. We have to fight the conditioning that has been given to us. Are we going to fight this? Yes! Turn around and give somebody a high five. Is it okay? High five. Say, hey sister, I am going to be with you. Your, Andrew, your phone closed again. <laughs> Don't talk too much. But my whole point in this is one of the one of the groups that gets pushed to the side so often with women is women who are in sex work. And Ashley may not be able to be here to speak yeah. about the stripper strike, but we do need to stand with our sisters. Yeah sex workers and strippers and women who have sovereignty over their body and the type of work that they're going to do are the, some some of the most criticized women along with women of color women who do not have a lot of money so don't forget this if they're different than you that's fine go get to know them say hello ask a question get to know somebody i'm gonna stop because there's two other people that we need to hear from delegate elizabeth guzman Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So good evening. I am Delegate Elizabeth Guzman and I represent the 31st District which includes parts of Prince William and Fauquier County and I've been recently elected as the first Hispanic female immigrant to the Virginia Senate. Thank you. So a little bit about my story. It's, I'm originally from Peru. 
I came to this country as a single mother, looking for better opportunities for my oldest daughter, Pamela. She is 26 now. And I never imagined that educational and professional opportunities would become available to me. At the beginning, like many immigrants, I juggled three jobs just to be able to afford a one-bedroom apartment. But through hard work and dedication, I put myself through college, graduated school, and now I have two master's degrees, one in public administration and a second one in social work. Thank you. So uh, when I decided to run for office, people usually ask you, right, Why, what are you doing this? So for me, it was a couple of reasons. Number one, it was the lack of representation. And I've been following the Virginia Assembly for a few years because as a social worker, I'm a macro social worker, I came a few times over here advocating for a few bills. But then as I was listening to these legislators and how they refer about immigrants, it really pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just that the mentality that they, when they refer about immigrants, when they talk about MS-13 and how we are criminals and how we come to harm this country, it was really painful to me. So I realized, you know, that we didn't have any voice here. And we need to have someone that could explain to them that that is not true. That many of us leave our countries, our families, our culture, our food behind, looking for better opportunities. And that's the reality of 12% of, 12 of the Virginia population. So many times, you know, we do jobs that no one wants to do. We get abused through the process because when you are undocumented and they fire you, then you, there's nothing that you could do. They just let you go and they uh, steal your pay pretty much. So that's what I wanted to do. it. But the second reason, I think that I was the daughter of my dad would always said that he was blessed with three girls and one boy. And he raised us in a way to make us believe that we could achieve anything we want in life. But then when you came here and you realized that race is a thing and being a woman and coming to a body where even though the majority of population in Virginia are women, we were only 19 a year ago. So, but then you are a woman of color, right? So as a woman, you need to prove your race. Then you have to prove your gender, your, I'm sorry, your gender and then your race. And your question, when you decided to run for office, so they ask you, uh, for example, who's gonna take care of your children if you run for office? How are you gonna balance your professional and your personal life? What are you gonna do with your full-time job when you get here? I'm sure no one asked this to males. And I'm sure that all of the males who serve in this body, they work full time, they are parents, and they have you know, children as well. So for, as a women of color, we constantly need to prove ourselves that we are competent, that we're intelligent, and now it's our opportunity to see what can, to prove, what can we bring to the table. As, and myself as a Latina, what can we offer from my perspective to make this body better so we can make laws that could improve the life of all Virginians. And I'm here to fight to make Virginia a place where everyone is welcome. And where everyone who's willing to work hard and sacrifice, because that's what my experiences assured me. So if you're willing to fight, if you're willing to work hard, you could achieve the American dream. And that's why I'm here, and I'm here to be your voice as a woman. I'm here to be your voice as an immigrant. We came here with a progressive agenda, as you probably imagine. You know, we wanted to bring early childhood education programs, but then we learned in the process that it's too expensive, and that's not a priority of many people. So, but we're going to continue to file. We believe that each child here in this country should have an opportunity to succeed. And that should start since early childhood education. We need to have more preschool programs. Why? Because while these children are provided quality care and quality education, then my moms, women, who got work full time, we could go to school if we, don't, if we want, so we can become so sufficient. We also talk about minimum wage. It was sad for me while I was knocking on doors to learn that there is still people in my district who are facing who are facing the reality that I had 20 years ago and I have to have three jobs just to make ends meet. So it's not right that people need to be choosing between food and family. That's why it's so important to increase the minimum wage. As well, we had a couple of bills, we were not successful, but we're coming back. And in 2019, if we cannot change
change these minds, we're going to change their seats. And you're going to promise me that. Finally, you know, we had an agenda of Medicaid expansion. I mean, Medic I was just got a phone call with a reporter about Medicaid expansion, and I am the only Democrat who represents Fokker County. So they wanted to know from Fokker Times, they wanted to know what, why did I vote yes to that bill. And for me, it's very simple. Healthcare is a human right, it's not a privilege. <laughs> And I've been working in human services field, and I've seen people dying for not having health insurance. So this will provide health insurance now that we put the hard, the working uh, requirement in it. It's okay. You know, working a requirement will help 300,000 Virginians still, and we should be happy. But we're coming back. That's not enough. But at least providing health care to 300,000 Virginians hard working Virginians who live in poverty, it's important. It's gonna create 30,000 jobs. Our rate insurance for the ones who have health insurance, because people would wonder, how does it affect me if I have health insurance? It affects everyone, because Virginia, for the amount of people that we have underinsured and uninsured, is why, is that's why we pay so much on premiums. So our rates are gonna get down. You know, and finally, you know, my friends across the aisle will say we are physically responsible by taking the money under ACA. Well, if that's the case, then we've been irresponsible for many years because 26% of the budget of the Virginia Assembly depends on the federal government. So don't try, don't try to convince me otherwise. So thank you for having me here today. Uh, Elect decisions take place at different levels, at the local level, at the state level. So if you think that you are inspired, reach out to us. If you want to run for office, we need more women in elected uh, offi offices. So you can be our voice. You bring different perspectives. And, re and please have your daughters, make sure your daughters are also following this, this and remind them when they turn 18 that their vote is their voice and please take them to register to vote and vote every year in Virginia we have elections so don't forget that that's your right thank you so much Deborah Rodman thank you thank you thank you so much brothers and sisters Thank you for coming out today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm Delegate Deborah Rodman. I represent uh, District 73 right here in Henrika, new, not too far away. I don't know if you realize I'm a professor of anthropology and women's studies, the director of women's studies at my college. So International Women's Day has a special meaning to me. It's a day where we just don't recognize the strength and perseverance of the suffrage movement in the United States and the strides and hard work we're making towards gender equity, but we recognize the determination and struggles of women all over the world. As feminists, we have our priorities, and International Women's Day centers us and reminds us that our priorities here in the United States towards gender parity and equality are not the same worldwide. Women in developing countries, Africa, Latin America, Asia, and Middle East, are fighting social, economic, cultural, and political disparities that we can barely imagine here in the United States, but we keep fighting for. As we push for causes like access to political representation, I'm so proud to be part of this historic number of women who are in the Virginia State Legislature now. But as we fight for things like reproductive rights, political representation, women all over the world are fighting to have basic medical care, even entrance into the formal work sector. These are the things that we're fighting for, and sometimes we get so caught up in our causes in the United States and in the Western world that we forget that the rest of the world, the women, are fighting for different things. And that's part of International Women's Day, is to remind us that all our priorities as feminists are not the same. But we do have a lot of things in common. We're at the ongoing strikes in Spain and England and the We Strike movement. We know that the gender pay gap is a worldwide issue. Women have always worked the second shift and domestic labor in the household remains unremunerated. We don't get paid for that day job. And when I, when I meet women uh, who are at, at home, I never say to them, do you stay at home? I say, do you work outside the home? Because we all work in the domestic sphere and we are still working that second shift. And our day jobs, we remain underpaid. Gender equity is, is a worldwide struggle, gender equity pay. Women also took to the streets today in the Philippines to denounce some of the worst violations of rights in Asia. Mothers, sisters, and widows who have been killed in extrajudicial actions are speaking out. 
Isn't it always the women, the mothers, the sisters all over the world who are out speaking for their children, their sons, their daughters who have disappeared in genocides, ethnocides, civil conflicts? It's the women who are out there speaking for the ones who can't speak. It is the women and mothers who take to the streets and speak out for those who have disappeared or been assassinated. And of course there is the universal subordination. Um, that is fighting against gender-based violence. I don't know if you realize, I'm a professor of anthropology, but I serve as an expert witness in federal court, helping women and children who are fleeing domestic violence, sexual abuse, fe fleeing gang violence, and things we couldn't possibly imagine. 50% of all foreign-born individuals in the United States are women. They comprise almost half of the refugee arrivals and people that granted asylum. Similar to most women, even more so, immigrant women make great sacrifices for their families, embracing citizenship and encouraging social and civic integration. This, this is what they do. They work hard, they come to this country, they bring their families, and they make sure that they are working hard for their families. And they are the ones always at the forefront of reaching out and integrating in their receiving country. But immigration enforcement has taken its toll on immigrant women, and they are vulnerable to abuse at work and at home. Detention and deportation separate women from their families. Immigrant women are more likely to face barriers to adequate health care and twice as likely as American-born women not to have health insurance at all. And of course, immigrant women are more likely to be traff trafficked in the sex trade. A revolution is here. We are part of this revolution, and I'm so grateful for you to be today. Her name, this revolution, her name is Womankind. And I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues and my friends. As part as the largest election of women to the state legislature in the history of the Commonwealth, I say to all women and men, we will continue to fight for women's rights. And I know we've heard it so many times, but human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights once and for all. <laughs> When we fight for women's rights, when we fight against the patriarchy, we all prosper. We are women, we are ready, and our time is now. Thank you so much for being here today, and thank you for all your continued work. As every person who is here today, every person who is watching, every person who is bleeding and fighting across the planet today, thank you for being here, thank you for being alive. This is important work. Uh, as women, we, we are integral to the fabric of everything and we need to reach out to others who are struggling in every possible way it's not just about women it's not just about capitalism it's not just about this or that we are in this together and it is important for us to remember that today has been a wonderful showing of all of the different struggles that are important to each and every one of us so now ends the bell tower and cold section of the evening <laughs> We're going to head on over to the main library for a screaming, screening and screaming of She's Beautiful and She's Angry. The movie is going to be shown in the auditorium in the basement to get there, walk down the stairs right in front of the main entrance and then take a right at the bottom of the stairs. If you cannot walk to the main library, let one of us know. Um, who's our ride, friends? Raise your hand. This fellow right here, he's a trusted pal. If you cannot walk, please hop a ride with him. I hear there's going to be snacks at the library. And please remember that your action and your persistence does not end today when you go to bed. You have to wake up tomorrow, tomorrow morning and take one step, in, one foot in front of the other. Find your place and help each other out. Stand up. Thank you.